Model steam engines for beginners, part 31. Fixing a common valve timing problem on a Stuart S50. Packing the gland of a Stuart 10V, fitting cylinder drains and making an exhaust pipe, setting the valve timing and giving it a test run on air. The valve timing is out on this engine and I can see why. The slot headed grub screw has broken off, so using a pair of pliers to loosen it, I carefully removed the remains of the grub screw using a very small screwdriver. I don't like slot headed grub screws in any shape, way or form because I find they break very frequently. And now to take oneself to the edge of insanity it's time to set the timing. Here's the 7BA grub screw that I've fitted instead of the broken one. So now I can easily adjust the position of the eccentric relative to the crankshaft. So why is timing so important? As you can see, it runs. It's important with a steam engine to make sure that the steam is admitted early to cushion the moving parts. What I've just done is rotated the engine manually with some compressed air fed into it, and this told me that the steam was being admitted, or the compressed air in this case, too late in the stroke. That's slightly better, I'll just check it again. It's very important to use low pressure air for this job, particularly on a bigger engine. This one would give you a nasty nip, enough to cut your finger, but a larger model steam engine could do serious damage to your hand. Well, it's getting better. It's running in harmony with itself a little bit more. I adjusted the eccentric one more time. It's still admitting the compressed air slightly late. With my hands feverishly twitching, I reach out once again for the Allen key. I'm only moving the eccentric a very, very tiny amount each time. It doesn't take much. Just watch how little I move it. You can't see it too clearly because I'm moving it such a small amount. I moved it possibly a 64th of an inch. It's a very fine adjustment. What's happening is the eccentric moves a valve over the valve ports and providing that the slide valve is in the middle, as it is on this engine, you're able to advance or retard the position where the valve opens and closes just by moving the eccentric. I think that's the position. I took a break away from it and went into the outer part of the workshop to paint the cylinder cladding. And here, now it's dried, I'm refitting it to the cylinder. After securing the cladding, I fitted an exhaust elbow in place using some Loctite 542. And to finish the job, I fitted a new grub screw to the flywheel to replace the large 4BA bolt that was originally in there. Over the years, I've owned and worked on many examples of double 10Vs and 10Vs, and this is the nicest one I've ever seen. It's not even fully finished, it doesn't have inlet or outlets, and it doesn't have any drain cocks in it, and it really is beautiful. I'm pretty certain this is built from a machine kit. Either that, or the engineer who built it was exceptional. It's not even oily, yet it feels very good. The only slightly negative thing I noticed about this engine is that there was side play on the valve spindle. And when I loosened the nut and had a look, the gland wasn't packed. So what I'm doing at the moment is packing the gland using an old piece of graphited yarn. I don't like the modern stuff, it doesn't seem to be as good as it used to be. So I keep quite a lot of this old stuff in a box in a drawer. It's much denser than the stuff that they make today and it seals better. A couple of words about gland packing. It's really important not to over tighten the gland nut because if you tighten the packing too hard against the rod itself, it will score the metal. Normally, I would firmly tighten the gland packing nut and then back it off half a turn. I can't really run this engine until I've fitted some drain cocks, so using some Loctite 542 and a pair of 3 16 by 40 threads per inch drain cocks, in no time at all, they're fitted to the engine. Here's the first one. I'll just level it up, and here's the second one going in. 
and I was very lucky with these drain cocks because they didn't need any washers. They aligned in the holes perfectly. The next part of the job is to make an exhaust pipe. I'm making this from a piece of quarter of an inch diameter copper tubing with the shank of a twist drill pushed down the middle of the copper to keep it in line. And here I'm using my homemade tailstock die holder. I made this a while back and I also produced a video showing how I made it. And it's very useful because most of the popular sizes of die that I use are preloaded into the die stocks. And here's the finished exhaust pipe once I polished it up on the polishing spindle. And I think this looks okay. Turning the engine around, I'm fitting a thread adapter into the inlet. Stuart models have always used 32 threads per inch for the inlets on engines of this size, but whenever I'm piping an engine, I always use 40 threads per inch union nuts. And why is that? Well, I've always done that because I'm into locomotives and it's the general standard for locomotives. For number 10s, whether they be double 10s or single 10s, the standard is quarter by 32 threads per inch for the steam inlet and the steam outlet. It doesn't look like this engine's ever run, so I'm making sure I get oil into every moving part. And it's very important to not miss any of them out, particularly the main bearings and the big end, the small end, the crosshead, the crosshead guide, the piston rod, the valve rod and the eccentrics. Via the union that I've just fitted to the steam chest, I've already injected some oil into the steam chest which will be carried to the cylinder to lubricate that. So here we go, test run number one. And it seems fine. Well, it's not quite really. As per usual, the timing is out. The compressed air is being admitted once the piston has gone well past top dead centre, as you can see here. That's not really a big problem because there is enough inertia in the flywheel to carry the crankshaft over top dead centre. But that's not the point. Late admission like this is not a good thing for a steam engine. So why not? Well, it's a good idea to admit the steam or compressed air early so it cushions the reciprocating masses. The problem is, if you set the admission too early, then the engine doesn't run very well slowly. So on small table engines like this, it's a little bit of a compromise. And here I go with the Allen key to adjust the timing. I'm moving the position of the eccentric sheave, which will advance the timing. So I'm moving it to the right. Not much, only a very small amount. If I move it all the way round, the engine will go in reverse. I've moved it about, I don't know, a sixteenth of an inch or something. And now I'm rotating the flywheel with a little bit of compressed air going into the engine, which tells me that it's still retarded, but not as bad as it was. I could leave it like this because it's running particularly well at the moment, but the admission is still late. Look, it's just after top dead centre. I want it to be either exactly on top dead centre or just a Nats dick before. And for those of you who didn't watch the video when I explained all these strange terms, a Nats dick is a very, very small amount. And according to one viewer, a Nats dick is an imperial measurement. So with obsession mode, not OCD, just obsession mode, fully engaged, here we go again. And this is definitely near enough for rock and roll, it's actually near enough for rocket science. The engine will run very slowly and smoothly, and when I turn up the air pressure, the engine responds immediately. And that's it from me for this one. I'm going to run the engine in slow motion for a while. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.
please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.